when a person grows stronger week to week, it is proof that there is a positive change taking place inside of his muscles. Since muscles, by definition, lift weights, a muscle growing stronger can't be exactly the same muscle. If it were exactly the same muscle, it would be limited to lifting exactly the same weight. The main point here is that as a muscle grows progressively stronger over a period of time, it is changing somehow. I'm not specifying what that change is now. I will. For now, just remember, if a muscle is growing stronger, it is in a process of positive change. If during this period of change, the bodybuilder continues to consume nutritionally a maintenance level of calories, by definition here, he will only maintain his existing physical mass. He won't lose, he won't gain, he'll maintain. It goes to the laws of physics or thermodynamics. You can't create something out of nothing. You can't build bigger muscles out of thin air. Certain nutritional and caloric values are absolutely required. What the bodybuilder will be doing by consuming a maintenance level of calories is in essence something less than desirable. To some extent at least, he'll be frustrating the needs of the growth mechanism. He did train to failure, which is what nature requires one do to trigger the growth mechanism into motion. Also, he is growing stronger, therefore the muscle is changing. When the growth mechanism is activated, you might visualize it as a moving conveyor belt of sorts, for lack of a better image, with a number of little men standing on top who are reaching up, they're reaching out to grab the nutritional caloric cement, as I like to call it, that it requires to build the second story, the new mass. But remember, consuming a maintenance level frustrates those little men. They are reaching up, but nothing is there. The body is only receiving enough nutritional and caloric values to maintain the first story, the existing physical mass. In such a case, the muscle change I was referring to earlier, where the bodybuilder is growing stronger, will remain primarily a qualitative strength change. It won't manifest much, if at all, as a quantitative muscle change, i.e., a muscle mass body weight increase. In order to avoid this, the frustrating of the growth mechanism, and to do the opposite, to serve the needs of the growth mechanism, one must consume a number of nutrients and calories above his daily maintenance level. He must go into a positive calorie balance. This can be done in a methodical, intelligent fashion, such that growth production needs are precisely met with little or no excess to cause any appreciable fat deposition. Prior to my emphasizing the caloric dimension of nutrition in my clients, most would grow stronger, but many didn't gain the mass and body weight they desired. Since reducing the volume and frequency of their training, as well as emphasizing the need for a positive calorie balance, my clients' mass and body weight increases are finally keeping pace with their strength gains, and in the majority of cases, little or none of the weight gain is fat. For those who are acceptably lean, as well as those who may be concerned they have a bit too much fat presently, I'd suggest you embark on the suggested routine while in a positive calorie balance of three to five hundred a day. For that second group, who may have a little more fat than they'd like, I propose that you place your fat loss concerns on hold for two or three months, put on 10 to 20 pounds of muscle, then go on a fat loss diet, at the end of which you'll not only be leaner, you'll have the extra muscle too. The goal, remember, listener, is to serve the nutritional caloric needs of the growth mechanism to gain muscle mass and increase body weight while adding little or no body fat. To do so in a methodical fashion, start by keeping a five-day food diary. Write down everything you eat for five days and don't become self-conscious during that period and alter what you have typically been eating. What is needed is a representative sampling so it may be ascertained what your daily average calorie intake is. Write down everything you eat for five days and the quantity. Be as accurate with the quantity as possible, but don't fret if you think you're off a little. At the conclusion of each of the five days, sit down with a good calorie counting book. If you don't have one, buy one, as every conscientious bodybuilder should have one since the caloric dimension of nutrition is vitally important, and tally the total calories for the day. 
At the end of the fifth day, take the five daily totals, add them for a grand total, divide by five, and you'll have, of course, your daily average caloric intake. You must also weigh yourself at the beginning of day one and on the morning of day six. If you didn't gain or lose during that five-day period, your daily average is also your daily maintenance level of calories. Let's assume, hypothetically, that your daily maintenance level of calories turns out to be 2100. Upon starting the suggested routine, make a conscientious, disciplined daily effort to keep your calories three to 500 above the maintenance level. If you don't, you'll maintain you won't gain. But I'm not suggesting that all of a sudden you should start shoveling down indiscriminately large amounts of food. You'll only get fat. I have observed with my phone clients that some, not many, do not have a set maintenance calorie level, but a maintenance calorie range. If after two weeks into the training program, with a positive calorie balance as suggested, you haven't gained a couple of pounds, you might be just such an individual, so increase your calories another 300. And the calorie increase should conform roughly with the 60-25-15 ratio, with perhaps a bit greater emphasis on protein. Those who do as indicated and conscientiously keep watch of their calories so that they're in a positive balance of three to 500 a day will be quite delighted. In addition to growing stronger every workout, he'll gain seven, eight, nine, ten, or more pounds the first month. I can't say with any certainty just how much you might gain due to genetic variations. As mentioned previously, there are slightly more than 600 calories in a pound of muscle. If you are stimulating three pounds of muscle growth a week, you will require roughly 600 times three, or 1,800 calories per week above maintenance. This translates to 257 calories a day above maintenance. I am recommending slightly higher so there's less chance of any slightest frustrating of the nutritional caloric needs of the growth mechanism. Let's assume, in your particular case, that your growth requirements don't necessitate a full 300 calories a day above maintenance. Then yes, the excess will turn to fat. However, there are 3,500 calories in a pound of fat. If you required only 150 calories a day above maintenance, the other 150 would turn to fat. But you would only gain one pound of fat a month. When a bodybuilder is actually gaining muscle mass as well as getting stronger, he should see a reciprocally reinforcing relationship between the two. In other words, his muscle mass increases will facilitate even greater strength increases, which in turn facilitate greater growth stimulation. And the rate of your strength increase will serve as a relative indice of how much growth is being stimulated. If you are only increasing a rep or so here and there, obviously there is less growth stimulation than if you're increasing in strength by leaps and bounds. If at some point you believe you may need more than a three to 500 positive calorie balance, go higher, but be cautious and methodic. Go up a couple of hundred calories at a time and keep tabs on your body weight. If at some point you start gaining very rapidly, check to make sure it's muscle, and if not, simply cut back. Gaining fat is anathema for the bodybuilder, certainly never to one's advantage. A right-thinking bodybuilder should desire to gain only muscle, as his goal is not to be only muscularly massive, but also defined in appearance. It is not necessary, as I was led to believe 30 years ago, that one must bulk up that is, gain fat with muscle, to build muscle, which was a very common belief. The more fat one puts on, the longer and harder he'll have to diet to get it off. And I can tell you from personal experience, it's not fun. As a bodybuilder continues to gain muscle mass and body weight, his maintenance level of calories gradually goes up until finally weight gains slow down, then come to a halt. When you see that your weight gains have slowed down, Increase your calories another three to five hundred and you'll resume gaining. 